Okay, let's get started today. Um, I have uh, just a couple of announcements or reminders, really. Um, please, please, please join the community challenge. It is posted. Oh, uh, crud. It is um, posted over here. Uh, pin to community. And it is describing everything you need to do. There's two kinds of environment, uh, two kinds of designs due that day for our last class uh, next Tuesday. Uh, this Tuesday is our last class for the Christmas holiday, and I take off for a couple weeks. Um, so the 18th is the last class we will have, and the due date for the challenges. Um, it'll, I'll try to make it as long as possible since we won't see each other for a while. Um, that day I have so much, so many chores to do. To prepare for the holidays, but I will try my best to fit in. I mean, it's just two hours. Um, I'll try my best to fit in everything on that day. So one of, excuse me, one of them is an elf design and one of them is an environment design. Please read it. There's a twist to this challenge. Um, you can't use any obvious Christmas symbols, but it has to look Christmassy. Uh, please go get into that. Um, and then we have the Portrait Studio sale at 50% off. I've already announced it. 50% off Portrait Studio between the 23rd and the 31st. If anyone doesn't have it, now's your chance. I will not host another sale until June or, or a, between April and June. That's a while from now, and then it'll come with an overhaul update, which means the price will go back up. There will be another update around that time with some fabric studies, uh, hopefully posable fabric studies. Um, uh, so uh, if not, it will, there will be st uh, static fabric studies, but they will be up there. And... Um, uh, so the 24th, the last week of this year, the last week of 2018 is the last time to get Portrait Studio on sale and this is the lowest it'll ever go. I've, I've made it this low. I could, it was just supposed to be a 20% off sale or 30% off, but I'm just going to make it similar to the one we had in October just so everyone has it at an affordable price. I understand that it's too expensive. I really do. Uh, but I also try to keep it fair for all the resources and time and effort we put into developing it um, and how helpful it is for you. Uh, you can use it for all kinds of projects and it has multiple tiers of application from educational material uh, to the way I handpicked uh, the forms and, and whatever assets are in there to the fact that it will help you draft an entire scene and build a reference for the most complicated scene with multiple characters and objects together. Um, so you're not going to find a program this affordable even without the sale with this much to offer and you don't have to learn uh, 3D modeling. So I really recommend you guys take advantage of this sale. Uh, so uh, that is done. What other announcements do I have? Um, I think it's a little bit too late for postcards but if in the Euro you're in the US area you might be able to bring uh, have a postcard sent in from where you're from for the, for the uh, postcards unboxing sort of video that I'm going to be doing on Christmas or sometime around Christmas. Maybe be on the new year um, and uh, I'm just gonna try to do these every year I got a really weird package from someone and I'm not comfortable with that so so I don't know don't send me religion recruitment packages and pamphlets please gee geez like don't do that um, it was really really weird getting that and I just it wasn't wasn't good it was the misuse of my PO box I only welcomed Christmas cards and holiday cards, not because I'm a Christian or I want to be a part of any kind of Christmas, uh, Christian group. It's just for the season. It's just season greetings. That's all. Um, and that's it. That's all I'm welcoming. Anything else gets thrown in the garbage. I'm not available for recruitment. Okay. Um, then we have, um, that's it. So the challenges is the last one until February. Last, uh, we didn't, we couldn't for some reason, I mean, I know why, but we couldn't do the Wednesday meetup like I promised. Something happened and Antares didn't make it. Uh, so we might not have that for a while until I figure out how we're going to do this between time zones. Um, so nix that announcement for the Wednesday meetups. Okay, guys, let's get started. Sorry about the lengthy announcements every time. <clears throat> so um, just opening my Photoshop. Any questions at all? I mean, you do call yourself fresh shit advice, so it makes a lot of sense. Um, what I wanted to talk about is how to work with reference with this piece, and then I want to talk about what's wrong with this one. Because everyone, when you look at one feature at a time, it looks right. It looks okay. But altogether, something is so off about it. 
Um, and that is the fact that the entire form is completely flattened. It's like it needs to be, it's like a deflated balloon. So um, I'm going to jump, go into li uh, liquify, filter, liquify, and I'm going to try to figure this out. So one of the reasons why it feels like a deflated balloon is because, don't worry about what's happening to the, uh, to the nose, I'll get the old layer back, is because there isn't enough compression. The eye hasn't been moved away into the far part of the face, and we're still seeing some of the eyebrow a little bit, which I don't, uh, you should have posted your reference. Um, the reference would have revealed a lot to you. Right, so when you guys post photo reference pieces, you post a reference with it. I'm ending the eyebrow where that a little depression is. Right now I'm only compressing for the sake of one eye and I'm going to enlarge both eyes. Forget what's happening to the nose, I'll take care of that in a little bit. All right. So the reason also why it looked flattened is because the inner eye corners were just the a touch too forced there and kind of tucked in they should have been a little bit lower and then you had the mouth not aligned with the um, edge of the face and the symmetry of the nose so you had a lot of stuff kind of flattened out against a flat depiction of the symmetry line instead of a blown up version of the symmetry line I'm just going to have to um, um, so sorry I'm just getting lost in the liquefy there's just so much stuff to change I'm just going to uh, flip the canvas as well the eyebrow is moving into the temple that shouldn't be that's why it felt flattened as well there was a lot of that blowing back up kind of like putting air back in the balloon has to do with that rotation that comes with the side of the face which is the z-axis and then you have the hairline which isn't making any sense to the perspective because it seems to the seems to cater to the camera not the rotation of the head and um, I don't think I'll need another layer for the nose and then I'm trying to enlarge the cavity of the nose sh since she's looking down at the camera we would see more of her nose and I'm going to try to touch the nose to the base of the face and then close the distance between the eye and the nose so they look like they're about to stack almost we can still see one nostril if we can see the far nostril the eyes have not overlapped underneath the nose right that back that's a quick little tip for three-quarter view and it just depends on the nose remember it's just a a rule of thumb it just depends on the nose it can it can change uh, depending on the kind of nose thank you titan yeah you don't need to wait for me to determine like what needs to be written back sometimes it's not always about those pivotal moments which i would call something worth writing down if you feel like something i've said is worth writing down write it down as well and write it back your class you guys I'm also showing the volume in the mouth and then we're going to talk about detail and working with reference and over representing detail but before that I'm going to show you what was wrong with the face before after there was no rotation the, the eyebrow was all the way in the temple shouldn't be all the way there should be kind of sneaking in and it just depends on what you had with your reference. It looks like front view eyes, which I'll wish that with a little bit of distortion. Now we have more visible space on the temple that is facing the camera. I'm just going to get rid of this hairline. Rotation is a tricky one uh, because it'll make you think that you've got as you're seeing as much as you should see, but we don't know what we're not seeing. And we can't tell if what we're seeing is too much or too little because of um, tunnel vision. So rotation is like a plague 
along with line dependency. It's one of the worst things to correct for a student. I'm so sorry. I ate really quickly before classes, and I'm all hiccupy now. I'm so sorry. I sound like a, a dad. <laughs> I'm also going to smudge away. I got my smudge brush on 6% strength. And I'm smudging away at the hairline. Way too much detail represented there. The smudge brush I'm using is the, um, where are you? Where did you go? Oh my gosh. It is the number four smudge brush in my smudge set. Um, and then we have a little bit of rotation left before I finish up. And this is just so we can boost it. I'm going to grab the entire far half and I'm going to paste it and watch this. Tuck it in some more. It does not damage the face at all. It gives us just a little bit more rotation before, after. I'm going to erase away with soft brush to get that perfect seam. before, after. And then I'm just going to smudge away at whatever else is in the seam here. Alright, so that little bit of, of uh, rotation has added a lot more to the painting. Actually, I need to uh, undo for a quick second because this should have gone up. Damn it. Keyboard shortcuts image. <coughs> Slope canvas horizontal. Accept, accept. Alright. So I'm compressing a little bit more. Okay, and then the mouth needs to be brought back. I'll take care of it. So it's still a little bit too much visible. Hopefully I'm not changing the face too much, but essentially I don't care about the face and the likeness right now to the photo. What I care about is that you have the principle intact, that you have the fundamental intact. All right, and then I'm going to adjust the mouth because the teeth got lopsided a little. Everything should be symmetrical with the symmetry line of the face. All right, so we started smudging. Let's just take a look at the before and after. Rotation, the face is nicely tucked into the head. Now we're just gonna think about the light source. I think this temple is a little too dark. I'm not sure if that was my doing. I think the forehead is a little too dark. All right. So I'm going to start smudging, and I'm going to smudge everything that has a brush size as thin or thinner than the lashes. And the lashes in this case are way too visible. So first of all, let me get rid of the, the extent of the thinness in the lashes and how sharp they are. So I'm going to smudge away at the lashes first. This will make them behave more as a general representation of the texture of the lashes, with lashes being referred to as a texture. Then I've established that the lashes are this blurry. This means that every other set of hair chunks used on the face need to go down and smudged away in a pattern of detail relief, detail relief. For the most part, though, the, the eyebrows on the lower half, starting with the inner root of the, like the inner brow, the under part of the inner brow, that root system thingy, needs to get completely smudged away. So we're trying not to contest the focal point. Then the mouth, look how far away the mouth is. When I get rid of these little brush strokes you have, you barely have any form in the mouth. You don't have a core shadow, you don't have anything looking up at the light. And you don't have radial shading on either side of the lip corner. Sometimes we get students that are really good at copying reference, but that's about it. Come the uh, fundamentals like rotation or radial shading or typical 
basic technical uh, application of sh of paint on a on a on a canvas with form knowledge guiding, they completely fall. They don't have all the basics at all. But they can fool fool people into thinking they have skill. They can fool themselves into thinking they have skill. But you don't even have the basics, which is radial shading around the mouth. You don't have that. No shades are radiating outside of the cavity that the, that the corners of the mouth are creating back into the face. No core shadows and no highlights are being built around the cylindrical form of the, of the, of the lips. All of these are basics. Okay. Look how flat the mouth was before. All right, and then there is the greater basic, which is which is gonna whoever this artist is. If this was a, a live classroom, I'd make them walk up to the class and shame them. <laughs> There's a core shadow missing, a really big one, and that has to do with how highlighted your chin is. The beard shadow needs to be present, and it just behaves like a beard, and that it kind of tucks away the lower half of the face and keeps everything maxed out with how bright everything can be in that lower half. All right, it's hard to tell where the light source is coming from, but I'm gonna darken the nose by default. And then I'm just gonna throw a general cast shadow over the darkness in the eyes for the eye sockets, because they are generally recessed. Then I'm going to radially tuck away the far part of the face, the closer it gets to the light source. I mean, sorry, the, the closer it gets to the hair, the further away it gets from the light source. And this is all radial. I'm gonna bring down the whites in the eyes. An overexposed photograph will trick you into thinking the whites of the eyes are as white as uh, the, the highlights on the face. They are not. There are so many more corrections. Then there is the, the hairline that's just a little bit off because of all the liquify and the rotation problems. The hairline needs to be a bit lower before it was a, a bit high. So I'm merge that down. Smudge away the seam. And then there's the rotation in the mouth that's been uh, lost. So we see more of the C shape of the cylinder from three quarter view. And we don't really see the far corner. It's just more of the C shape. See that? C. <laughs> and then we're tucking up this nostril and hiding more of the far nostril behind the crest of the septum. Raising this corner so that things are a little bit more solid around the geometric anatomy, the origin shape, the native shape of the nose in this case, which is a triangular prism. And you're missing some more core shadows around the mouth, which are these. A radial drop in the cylinder. If these words, if the word radial doesn't make any sense to you, you need to stop, drop, and do some form studies. So see that? See all that form we just attained? Before, after, before, after. And then you can erase some of the shadow on the teeth if you really have to show them. Before, after. The teeth are too visible, but because they're going for a almost photorealistic render to the point where you can just call it a photorealistic render, they're allowed to do that, but everything apart from this level of rendering, I would consider it cartoony. And we would just use really, really basic, um, you know, brush strokes or blocks for the teeth as a whole. Like the whole teeth, front teeth is just one block. So overdoing the detail on the mouth distracted away from the eyes, which are the most beautiful thing. But even the eyes represent how little rotation and form knowledge you have in your vocabulary. And when, when you don't have that in your vocabulary, and I don't mean vocabulary in the way you speak, I mean your visual vocabulary, if that makes any sense. And that means that you don't understand that spheres get lighter radially towards the top, so that all these eyelids here need some kind of light indicating that this is the highest point of the eyeball. Everything else is a grade 
is a drop. The irises are not the right size. I'll just fix that in a second. And we have some creases here. And we have some asymmetry in the eyebrows. I'll just try to correct it. Large brush strokes for eyebrows. Why? Does anyone have an answer for that? And look at how much more elegance you have when you don't overdo the detail. Filter, liquefy. And look at how much of the far eyeball you're showing. That should be tucked in and then we see a C shape because we don't see the far corner. The far corner is no longer visible. That means the high point is somewhere over here. We're no longer seeing a sphere when you do that. I have to correct these things. So you can keep all that iris detail. You can keep it right where it needs to be. Oh gosh, this is turning into a mess. My liquify is really, really unruly. All right, and I'm hiding away the far part of the eye. I have to resize the eye in a second. God, it's such a terrible problem that liquify goes in a completely different direction. It's like it clings. I don't know what stupid ass tablet setting this is, but it's just the worst. God damn it. Okay. I think that's it. I'll flip again to make sure there are no mistakes and then I'll resize and replace the eye. Um. Shit. All right, and then we have a slight rotation problem. And so we have before, after. face is such a complicated thing. It's an accumulation of um, composition knowledge of all kinds of stuff accumulated together. Uh, form, beauty, gender, rotation. Did I say rotation? Probably did. Wait, I'm just uh, trying to control this circular shape here to keep the eye eyelid kind of tight around look at the correction I made tight around the eyeball and then I'm gonna grab this entire far half and do the same thing I did with it earlier but just a smaller section and I'm gonna tuck it in And for everyone, you know, who's having trouble accepting that this looks nothing like the reference but looks better than what was made, I does, I, again, I don't care about the reference. If I was marking this, if I was a, a judge in a contest, if I was uh, an employer, if I was someone looking at your gallery, if I was a user in a game you, you paid for, played for, I don't care that it doesn't look like the reference. What I care about is that it doesn't look uncanny. So likeness is less important than uncanniness. Uncanniness is more important than likeness. So rush the uncanniness, fix it. Correct uncanniness before you worry about likeness. Because you can get likeness. It looked like a girl we all knew. But the uncanniness was there and that there was almost no rotation. I do have to correct something so that it still looks like her because the eye size changes kind of changed her face she had smaller eyes for sure but the rotation was still present let me correct the eyes first <clears throat> so she had smaller eyes but thicker eyebrows 
So that I can fix. And that's all just measurement talk. And the thickness in the eyebrows, when we enlarge this eyebrow, we're keeping it tucked along the temple. We're not letting it kind of expand past. Fix uncanniness. Uh, fixing uncanniness comes before likeness. Excellent. Before, after. Okay, looks a little bit more um, familiar, I guess. And then if she did have a stronger jawline, um, so a jawline grows out horizontally. <laughs> what are you sons of bitches saying? And then, uh, and then enlarging the jaw this way. If she does have a strong jaw. Okay, there's still a couple of issues that are really hard for me to fix because they're just tiny, tiny little little corrections I have to keep going back and forth to. So see how I enlarged her jaw, strengthened it before, after. If she does have a bit of a unibrow, that's fine too. I'm just trying to keep it close. But you see how I'm giving a you know, uh, time for likeness after. Likeness is just scale and relative sizes of the features. Write that back to me. Whereas rotation is the titan with which you will struggle for the rest of your professional life. Also write that back to me. Rotation is theory and knowledge. Rotation is thinking. Rotation is critical thinking and problem solving. Rotation is constantly struggling with your brain to give you 3D images instead of the flat images it's been feeding you since you learned your first word. Likeness is simple measurement. One aspect of a really, really basic difference between human faces with anatomy and form still intact because all skeletons are the same. All human genetics are the same, essentially. We all have the same skeleton. If we all had a different skeleton, that'd be different. So before, after, rotation is there. I don't have your reference, so I can't work with what you used, what you saw. Um, I feel like there should be a little bit of light there for the nose for the cheek and a little bit more value shared between the side of the eye and the temple. A little bit more light underneath. The eyebrows. Flipping. There are still so many issues but there's only so much I can fix in a class and then finding some of that light there. As for how much shadow you have, I think it's way too much. I mean, light contrast you have. I think you should reserve your shadows for when they really matter. I'm sorry. Reserve your highlights for when they really matter. And I'm just raising this up. And then I'm just going to get my blocking brush and erase only where I know form-wise I need that contrast back. Depending on where the light source is coming from. Too much exposure before, this is more than enough. And chin is a bit too pointy, I'd start correcting that, or maybe lower the mouth. Okay, likeness is measurement of each feature. Feature rotation is the universal theory applied to the human skeleton or any, any form, not just the human skeleton, any form at all. Rotation is what the three-dimensional world has specific to itself. 
Rotation is not possible in two-dimensional drawings or a two-dimensional world. Rotation is the z-axis, the, the fact that the, an object can occupy space. Okay, so before, after. We rotated the scalp line, even if that's how the reference looked. I find it very unusual that the hairline was perfectly aligned to the camera after. The head hair situation is still a little bit off to me. The eyes can be lazier if you wanted lazy eyes. If you wanted a lazier eye, you don't go into liquefy for that. You crop the whole eye, copy paste it, and lower. Erase the top, and then you got a sleepier eye. You just need to start the crease where it originally, originally happened. That way she's just closing her eye if that's what you wanted. The openness in the nostril is good for the read, but if her nose is, has uh, collapsed nostrils, that's fine too. Go ahead and correct that. The thing is, the nose in the before wasn't revealing a direction in the light source as sharply as we needed. I would um, get a shadow and just throw it on one side, just so we can establish that this side is the bright side. There wasn't enough of a distinction in the before. Any questions at all? <clears throat> Any questions, boys and girls? Um, my liquify has been spazzing out, constantly shaking when I hope her over stuff. Any idea why? That's exactly what I'm having issues with. I have no idea why. It could be because you have enabled tablet PC, but I have to keep that enabled for a Huion. I don't know if it's your double-click distance in your um, uh, Wacom tablet settings. There's just so many reasons why. It's good to, to, to uh, look it up, look for tutorials to fix it, and go through them all. Trial and error until it fixes. There's something happened recently with all the pen updates in Windows. Mac doesn't, I mean, not Mac, uh, Wacom same thing really. Wacom doesn't uh, seem to know what it's doing uh, with the with Photoshop and Photoshop seems to have its own problems as well and glitches. I'm running CC but I have tons and tons of glitches. Come February I might even just opt out of my subscription and my contract if I can do that. Ugh. <clears throat> yes, for questions please at Istabrak. Thank you Tyden. Her body looks like it's shrunk instead of rotated. Excellent observation. I didn't even look at that. Um, I would probably... Yeah, you're trying to show too much. I would prob probably just uh, enlarge it into this. I think that's fine. Any other questions, boys and girls? Boys? Um, if it's Wacom, I should have a fix for you. Yeah, Kyle's really good with that stuff. Is it just me or is the C shadow at the top of the chin making the chin look like it's facing the camera, but the face is in three quarter view? Um, yeah, good observation. So I would. I think it's because the light is also coming from the top down, so the shadow will travel here, but I don't think it would harm us to uh, to move it over. Let me see if the contrast will even allow it. There's constant tonal changes here, which might not allow it. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Yeah, the tonal changes aren't allowing the change. Um... It would just have to be manual. Which means I, uh, I do this. Get rid of this part and just keep the shadow part. But even then I think we have a way too bright chin altogether.
Okay. Any other questions? When do you know when you're ready to move on from form studies to anatomy? Um, when your form studies stop showing contrast dependency, when your form studies, with your form studies, you've perfected your edges, your edges are nice and clean and sharp, when you have a really, really good idea of how to climb your radial values. Those are the three main things to figure out with your form studies. Radial shading, contrast, light environment, and edge work. Write that back. And that means that you will know how to stop a feature when it just stops existing and a new edge starts. You'll know how to incorporate the light source's strength and direction on the face that you're drawing. Um, and then you'll know when to start climbing radially on fat pockets and other organic patterns on the face. That said, I don't recommend you go study muscles before you study a face. And I certainly don't recommend doing three quarter view before you perfect it for a uh, front view. These are all just the really healthy um, succession of ways to build on your rotation knowledge. I wouldn't teach you the last frame of the rotation without the first two frames. Um, do you understand? So you have to understand the, the start so that you understand the end point. Um, and that would be front view into side view. And that would be your order. So figure all that out, get into front view, then 14 day challenge for front view, 14 day challenge for three quarter view, then side view, perfect. Front view, side view, um, a three quarter view for body, torso, male, female, and then you're prepped and then you're ready. By then I hope that your contrast is so balanced you can try skin tones. These are the basic uh, orders in which I uh, assign these uh, levels and these tiers for my students. The ear looks weird to you because it's orbiting out a little bit. Her hair is showing too much. Eh, that's a consideration of like volume in the hair and I wouldn't really worry about that. Some people have big hair. <clears throat> um, radial shading, contrast, edge work. Once you've perfected those, you can move on to the face. Okay, Sean? Any other questions? Let's move on. Before, after. Take it easy with that focal point distribution. That's way too much detail. You're, you're throwing across the, uh, the, the canvas. This is a painting after all, not a photorealist reproduction of just, you know, trying to be a human printer. You have to understand the, the sciences behind observing light on form and uh, how to deliver detail in a painting and not overdo it and overwhelm, overwhelm your viewer. For this piece, a really, really quick fix. Um, I might not even paint over it. First of all, I don't know why you lighten the background. If your reference told you exactly the, the, the kind of light source you had, that's not a very sharp shadow on her from her hair. It's a very fuzzy shadow. And that means that the light isn't strong enough to even bounce some soft light onto the cheek. There is the, the uh, blacks are black and the shirt, the black shirt is completely black. And the background, being white, barely gets any light. This is a dark light environment, right? If the shadows were, were sharp, then that means the light is strong and the background would get some more brightness, bouncing some more in the environment, in the ambience. And then you have edges and outlines that you've interpreted as, I mean, sh edges and outlines, edges and shadows that you've interpreted as a line. You also don't have the eye socket radial drop in the light. And the sh sorry, in the shadow. So you see how it's light, light, dark, dark, edge, crease, slight cast shadow, and then the upper eyelid. You don't have any of that. You should have this stuff by now. The nostrils aren't established yet as dark spots. Nostrils are, are black. They're cavities. They're, they're holes in the face. Just like the mouth, we should have some dark spots blocked in by now considering that you have some dark spots uh, around the eyes already and you have the eyebrow darkness established. You need to start smudging more. You need to smudge. If you're not smudging, your blocks are too hard. There's a lot of soft edges here. A massive soft edge around the eyebrow bone because females have rounded foreheads, not low hanging, kind of like caveman foreheads like as male characters. And there's a lot of radial shading, a lot of softness and gradient here sculpting around the cheek fat and the ups and downs of the cheek fat that you don't have, you have it's just a straight line. You should have these uh, transitions by now. 
so what is this saying? It's, it's going back to Sean's question, which was, when do I start doing faces? When do I start figuring faces out? When you learn, when you teach yourself how to see an edge appropriately, the edge in this case is the crease and the trench form there, and the nose and the trench, and then the edge form there along the geometry of the nose, which is three-dimensional. It sticks out of the face like a big cube. And the radial shades and the radial shading around the mouth, which you do not have. You have just a milk mustache over here. So this is the kind of stuff that if you don't have it, your work looks like this. This is an appropriate amount of, this is an unacceptable amount uh, of lacking in fundamentals that you could have learned in a form study or two. Literally, you can literally get them all crossed off your list in a month's worth of form studies. And you'll have better values, you have better transition, you have better uh, gradients across, you have better brush control, you practice your brushes as well in a form study. That's one thing to add on to the benefits of a form study. So add that on to what you wrote back. It helps you perfect your brush use. Soft brush, you'll know how to use it and what percentage and what intensity and what hardness. And same thing with your blocking brush. You should always have a blocking, soft, and smudge brush. Okay, um, so I'm going to add this uh, class today to the classes that I have on my playlist. Um, what I've recently done is I built a playlist, a just getting started playlist on my channel. Um, and I just want to show you guys where that is. Oh, whoopsie. Uh, it's called Just Getting Started. Watch these. It starts off with the ridiculous video I made years ago. And then um, it goes into this, and it just kind of progresses. I put them in this order because that's typically how um, I, I would teach my students. And that's where I'm going to put today's class. Right here, working from reference, or maybe right after the eyes. I'll probably put the eye socket video in as well. So, eye socket. Okay, add, save to playlist, uh, just getting started, and then I will also add the, um, uh, I forget, what was the other video I wanted to add? I'll add today's video, um, there are a couple of other idio videos, videos I want to add, uh, to that playlist that I feel like you guys will benefit from, so eyes, I suck it. I'll go through them and make sure that they have like the best classes I've ever offered. The most focused classes are the ones that are in this just getting started. Even if you haven't just gotten started and you want a refresher on all the basics, just go here. Okay. Um, and that's it for today's class. So don't forget about the portrait studio sale. Tell your friends it's 50% off. Um, get it out there. I'll upload a couple more announcements between now and then I'll make a video for it. The Mac release is officially cleared by Ma by Apple. Can you believe that the last three or four weeks we have consistently applied to the Mac store or Apple store and they have denied it on the dumbest little corrections. Abu's just, his whole head has gone white with gray hairs or, or gray because it, it, it's just so unbelievable how nitpicky they are and how many obstacles they put in the way of developers, especially because of how much they take out of revenue for what you make as sales. Um, Apple's just made it so difficult for us to bring out Purchase Studio, but I believe we're in the home stretch now, and it'll be up on the App Store very, very soon. I was constantly talking with them, and that's why it's been so delayed. It was supposed to be available after our last sale for last month, but even now we're still haggling with them about what's left to be fixed. There's dumb little things Windows would never have given us trouble for. But hopefully that'll be out for the new year, for the sale time. It all just really depends on what's happening. But it's definitely available. It's definitely out there and fully functional for Mac uh, from the Apple Store. Uh, fully functional for iOS. Um, and then you have the 18th, this Tuesday, as the final day for the challenge. Please attend it. It's going to be our last class before the holidays. You won't see me for three weeks. Um, so uh, let me see. One, two... Three, yeah, so three weeks, maybe the third I'll attend. Uh, so th two to three weeks, we won't have a class. Um, so next Tuesday is the last one. It'll be the day where we do the, the critique hour for all the holiday-themed submissions from elves to environments. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I'll see you guys next class. Bye.